Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. The Dawning was what is referred to in Destiny as a live event. Live events are typically based around a holiday like Halloween or Christmas, and are sometimes used to ramp up to a new expansion's release, like the week before the House of Wolves. Live events feature new activities and loot that are exclusively available only during that event. There hasn't been many live events in Destiny, but they typically last anywhere between one and three weeks. The Dawning, the latest of these events, just concluded its three-week stay running between December 13th and January 2nd. Not only did it bring us those limited time activities like SRL and opening gift boxes, but it was also a permanent content drop in its own right. In this video, I want to take a good look back at The Dawning and measure its success as Destiny's latest live event. This is the dawning. It is a time to honor all that humanity has built and all that it will create. First, a couple notes right off the top. If you are familiar with Destiny's live events, you know they can often get a bad rap. The events themselves are great for the most part, however, they are typically delivered on their own without any real new content, and they are usually presented during what many would consider a content drought. This was mainly because the live team was a relatively small team within Bungie. Bungie is believed to be full steam ahead to meet their rumored September launch of Destiny 2, so I believe that there is an internal struggle to delegate resources to Destiny 1. Now things are a bit different. Off the heels of Rise of Iron's release, the development team responsible for delivering that expansion is now combined with the live team. So not only is the live team bigger, but it's filled with the same developers and designers that brought you all of Rise of Iron. It becomes a lot more obvious once you compare this past Festival of the Lost with the Dawning. I truly believe that the Rise of Iron team didn't have much to do with the festival, but instead immediately started working on the Dawning, revamping strikes and adding all the new permanent additions to the game. So how do they do? Was The Dawning a success? First up, let's talk presentation. The Dawning's decoration is probably my favorite amongst those we've seen. It was the first time the tower truly felt alive and busy. Although that was most likely because of the reality of there being two live events, the second being the return of SRL, and it forced all of the SRL decorations to the right side of the tower, which was awesome, and it just made it feel like there was so much going on. The design of the tower with the snow, ice, and fog felt magical, and the massive centerpiece and the floating lanterns behind you helped you feel all warm and cozy inside. Side. Also, the original dawning music that they composed for the event doesn't go unnoticed either. The gift boxes, both small and large, really put you in the holiday spirit, and I was more excited to open the larger boxes than I was opening my actual real-life Christmas gifts. The only shame is that they still didn't see it as an opportunity to open up the special event sections in the back of the tower to use for the event. The treasures could have been back there along the pond walkway, with the big treasures being all the way in the back. It would have also let them add more decorations there, and it would have been neat to maybe see Zavala and maybe even Shax moved up there for the duration of the event, just to change things up a bit. I also feel the Treasures of the Dawning were handled much better this time around, especially when compared to the Treasures of the Lost. The Dawning didn't revolve around the contents of those mystery bags. The event was incredibly fun aside from that, so Treasures of the Dawning truly felt like something extra for those who wanted to invest more in the live event that they were already having lots of fun in. They never felt required and became as novelty items like the new emotes and sparrows. Another thing that was unexpected was the return and revamping of some of the strikes in the game. The Nexus, the Will of Crota, and the Shadow Thief were all revamped with much improved encounters and mechanics. Now all of the year one strikes are officially back, and it's nice to finally have every single strike ever made in the playlist and at current light. Also strike scoring reinvigorated strikes in a big way. Paired with Zavala's extremely generous weekly Vanguard Elite bounties, it's easier than ever to reach 400 light without having to raid. SRL also made its return from last year with two new tracks on Earth and Mercury. Even though they vastly improved the rewards this time around, I found myself not as excited as I wanted to be for the new tracks, or really for the event as a whole. Maybe it's because that at the end of the day, winning doesn't matter and it doesn't reward the top placement in any way. Next time we see SRL, I really hope we get some sort of competitive ranking system or something to make it a lot more exciting. 
So now let's take a look at the actual content that was in the event. Here are all the major line items that we got in the 2.5 update. First up, we got the dawning event, which included anything that was sort of winter related, like the tower decorations, the gift box openings, the treasures of the dawning. Next, we got strike scoring for heroic strikes and nightfalls. We got the Sparrow Racing League in competitive matchmaking. We have the competitive spirit record book, which keeps track of both strike scoring and the Sparrow Racing League. And then as far as actual new content, we got the Vanguard Elite Weekly and Daily Bounties. We have the Queen's Wrath Daily Bounties. We have revamped strikes. And we got the Vanguard quest that essentially takes us through those revamped strikes. As far as new gear, we got new sets of Vanguard Elite gear that is available from those weekly bounties. We have new armor from the Eververse Trading Company, which was the Dawning set and the new Chroma set. We have new exotic quests for the Abaddon and Nova Mortis, and then we have the returned exotic, which is the Icebreaker. Aside from that, we got a few quality of life improvements, with some of the highlights being the increased rate of skeleton key drops, and the uncommon engrams automatically dismantling once you reach level 40. And there's of course the Treasures of the Dawning, and I've listed this separately as you'll see why in a moment. Now, the interesting thing about this live event is that the only thing actually leaving is the title feature, The Dawning. So just the first quest, the gift boxes in the Tower Plaza, and the Treasures of the Dawning as available for sale in the Eververse Trading Company. SRL is technically still going to be around, albeit only now accessible through private matches, and while Treasures of the Dawning is being removed from the Eververse Trading Company, you will still be able to attain one per week by finishing your first heroic strike. But aside from that, everything else is here to stay. You'll even be able to still work at your competitive spirit record book, I made a video about that a few days ago if you have any questions on how that'll work, so I'll leave the link in the description. I've always said that this is the key to making live events work, as a supplement to permanent content, not instead of. I'm glad that they finally heard the community on this and have responded with a bang. Overall, this ain't too shabby for a free and frankly unexpected content drop. The Taken King definitely didn't have anything like this last year, even though that expansion had much more content than Rise of Iron did. But I think that this approach is better, and I hope that this is the direction things are going for the future of the franchise. Smaller updates, but more frequently. The more Bungie can use the word new, the better the game will ultimately be perceived. That new stuff, of course, has to be great quality, but we've discovered that over the past few weeks, it doesn't take much to keep us playing for another couple months. In summary, I believe that The Dawning was a smashing success. It was definitely my favorite live event so far, and I feel that they just got it so right. If this is a sign of what we can expect for the rest of Destiny's life cycle, it makes me very optimistic for 2017. Anyways, what did you think of the dawning event? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe for more Destiny content. And I will see you all next time. As I mentioned before, the dawning will be concluded on January 3rd. After the event concludes, SRL will come to a close and you will no longer be able to queue into competitive matchmaking. But since SRL is going into private matches, you'll be able to queue in with your friends and finish your competitive spirit record book that way.